Today we're talking foundation piecing. Now, foundation piecing, a lot of people call foundation piecing paper piecing because you traditionally did it on paper. English paper piecing is usually done by hand. Foundation piecing is stitched onto a foundation. So usually when we do foundation piecing, we do it on paper and then tear the paper out. I love foundation piecing because I like to do weird stuff and I like uh, everything to line up really nicely, which you can do with foundation piecing sometimes better. So for instance, this quilt here, this is the kind of thing I really like the accuracy you can get from foundation piecing. I love this quilt. It's probably my favorite quilt. There's 4,500 pieces in this quilt and this is the block. It goes from here to this blue, the middle of this blue to the middle of these blues and then there's a blue in the center. So what happens is when you look at it from way back here, the blue that, that is four that go together looks the same as the blue that's one piece. The biggest tip I'm going to give you today, the thing that I wish I had when I made those I showed you was print and piece. For foundation piecing, I like the print and piece that's not fusible. You do not want to use the fusible one when you're doing foundation piecing because when you press it, you're going to stick stuff to stuff that you don't want to stick stuff to. What I like about the print and piece is that it is a um, fibrous paper. So it's part fabric and it's part paper. It's kind of thick. It feels almost like money paper. So it has a really nice hand to it. But what happens with this paper is when you sew on it, it sews through like fabric. But then when you're done with your quilt and it's all finished and you wash it, um, the parts that you stitched through stays in there like a stabilizer and the rest of it washes away. So your, your quilt is then softer, but the things that are holding the quilt together are still there like a stabilizer. The other reason they call it print and piece is because it's the right size to run through your printer. So you take your pattern and if you're not comfortable making the copies, you go to the UPS store or you go to Staples or you go to Kinko's and you say, please make me 27 copies of this on this paper. And if you hand it to somebody who runs the printer all day, they won't scale it because that's an issue. If you're going to download a pattern or copy a pattern on your computer, make sure that when you print it, you do not scale it. And if you're not sure what that means, Google it or, um, or ask somebody that prints a lot of things. I typically use my scanner and then I print it through my printer. This is my favorite thing ever for doing foundation piecing. But for the sake of this, what I did was I have, and I'm gonna show you how to do a tiny, I printed off a small, small pattern because these tiny pieces freak people out. But don't be scared. This is another reason to do um, foundation piecing is because you can do these really tiny little pieces and then if you don't have to tear the paper out, nothing gets wonky. The first thing I've got is I have printed my pattern on print and piece. That is this, okay? It's already printed and I've already trimmed it down. The other tools you're going to need is a regular ruler, a rotary cutter, a fabric glue stick, and an add a quarter ruler. This makes all the difference. It is not a very expensive tool. I've literally had this ruler probably for 12 years. I like to use a piece of template plastic when I'm doing this, and you'll see why in a second. When you buy this ruler, it comes with a piece of cardstock in it, and it says, don't throw this away. You're going to throw it away because it just looks like a wrapper. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to forget that it's under your fabric, and you're going to cut through it. Ask me how I know. So what I do is I take a piece of template, template plastic. Now, this stuff's clear. You're never going to find it on your mat. So I wrote my name on it so that I can find it on my mat. Now, here's the thing that gets people all kind of weirded out. One, foundation piecing is worked from the back. This is the back. So yes, this is your pattern. This is the side you're going to sew on which means your fabric is gonna go on this side. 
So some people hate this. I have a customer who's dyslexic, and so she's like, this is my favorite way to work because my brain already works upside down and backward. So the biggest thing I'm gonna suggest is when you're cutting your pieces out, if your pattern doesn't give you sizes to cut your fabric, just eyeball it and cut it a little bit bigger. And I do mean enough bigger that you can't see the piece, you can't see the piece that you're gonna stitch on at all. It's completely covered. Now, this freaks some quilters out and it'll be okay. You're gonna waste fabric with this technique. You are going to throw scraps away and it's okay. So the first thing I want you to do is take your piece of fabric. So here, everything is numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? It's like paint by number. So you always start with the one. Yes, it matters. You'll see why, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piece of fabric. I, I know that this piece of fabric is gonna completely cover that number one. That is very important. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna take my handy dandy glue stick and I'm gonna put some glue in the middle. I like this glue stick because look how bright yellow it is. I know exactly where my glue is. Then I'm gonna take my pattern and I'm gonna lay it on top of that piece of fabric. I know it's big enough because I, I already tested it. I'm just gonna stick it down. And I only want the glue to be in that one square. I don't want it all over the place. I just want it enough that I can now take this and flip it over. It dries dry, it dries quick, and it dries clear. I love this stuff. When I tried to teach myself how to paper piece, I made the biggest mess you've ever seen. I tried teaching myself paper piecing three or four times, hated it, threw it away, and gave up. Until I learned this technique, and then now I've added my own techniques to this, I hated this. This is where I like this bit of template plastic. Now, I wrote my name on it so I can find it. I want to sew between piece one and piece two, because you just have to just count. Piece one is already on there, so now I need to add piece two. The reason I like this clear piece of template plastic as opposed to um, the other template, so the other template you can't see through it. So you don't know where your line is. You can guess, but why guess when you can just see through it? So I use a clear piece of plastic. I line that plastic up right there on that line, okay? This is important. I line this up on the line and then I take my template or my pattern and I'm gonna fold it back and I'm gonna actually crease it. Do not pick up your cutter and cut this. This will not work and every time I teach this, I have somebody who cuts it right there. Two things happen, you have no seam allowance and you probably have cut through your pattern as well. This is where the add a quarter ruler changes everything. The add a quarter ruler has a little lip on it. See that little lip? It's exactly a quarter inch lip from the edge of the ruler to the edge of this grippy thing. So what you do is you set this down and then you pull it back until it stops. See how it's hitting that fold? So now if you pull that to there and you trim that, now what you have is a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Why does that matter? Because you need seam allowance so that your quilt doesn't fall apart. And then what that does is it gives you a way to line up your next piece. So here's my next piece of fabric. I like using batiks or solids for paper piecing because you don't have to worry about which side's the right side. So when you're learning, use batiks or solids. Um, the white on white I just thought was cute. So I'm gonna take, this is an extra piece of fabric. I've, I've already cut a bunch of two inch squares. I know they're plenty big because they're the pieces I used on the bigger um, sample I made. I'm gonna line this right up with the edge of the fabric that I already cut, okay? The reason for that is now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna sew right on that line. Guess who has a perfect seam allowance for both pieces of fabric? A couple of things about setting up your machine. I like the J foot because it has a clear opening here and see that little line right there in the metal? That's gonna give me a guide. I'm gonna turn my stitch length down just a little bit. 
just turn it down a little bit, like just under two millimeters. Now, if you're gonna do this on paper, turn your stitch length down to like one. We have our fabric on the back, so we're gonna sew from the front. I'm just gonna sew this line right here. You don't have to get 500 steps going back and forth to the iron. I also like this little steamroller thingy. This is by Violet Craft. It's wood, so it's not gonna stain anything. I'm gonna flip my fabric over and just roll press it. If you want to iron between each step, go for it. So now I have made piece one and piece two. I'm gonna flip it back over. You're gonna do this for every single piece. I'm gonna lay my plastic down. I'm gonna fold my pattern over, crease it, don't ever cut anything with a rotary cutter without a ruler. So if you don't put your ruler down, don't pick up your cutter. Okay. We're going to pick this up and move it again. Now, again, what I have is a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. And look at how it goes all the way across. Here's another tip. You need to make sure that the piece of fabric that you're putting down goes all the way to the edge of your foundation. It doesn't need to hang all the way off. It doesn't need to be like way over here. Don't line it up like this. But make sure that your piece of fabric goes to the end of your foundation and covers, your, uh, covers the other piece you're attaching it to by at least a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna sew again from the, out, from the end here. So I'm gonna line that crack up with, with the line on my pattern. Now, sometimes you're going to get to the end over here and you're going to need to take a half a stitch. You have control here. If you go to push it and you hold the foundation just a little bit so it can't go too far, just kind of put a little resistance on it, it'll come back and the needle will go down exactly where you need it. I usually will stitch a little way off the boundary out here, but not up here. Now we're going to press it, put your piece of plastic down, and then trim it. You know you're doing it right when, when you cut this, you only cut off a tiny little bit of that blue fabric. So now I'm just going to keep folding and flipping and folding and flipping and sewing. Don't worry that it looks messy. We're going to trim that down. Now what I have already done over here is, this is a little bit bigger version of what we, I just showed you. I'm going to show you how to finish it. So I have sewn all of them. Yes, there's black thread everywhere. Normally, I would not use black thread to sew white fabric, but I'm trying to prove a point. If you took a pattern and you scaled it to make it smaller or bigger, most of your patterns are going to have a sew line as your solid line, and the dotted line is going to be your trim line. If you scaled it, so if you did what I did here, and I have this one, but then I scaled it down to be smaller, you need to make sure that you're trimming it with a quarter inch seam allowance out here. Otherwise, you're not gonna have enough fabric to sew it to the next piece that you're gonna join it to because you're just making elements here. If you didn't scale it, then you can just go ahead and trim it on that dotted line, no big deal. I don't trust myself that much, so I go ahead and trim it with a quarter inch um, seam allowance. So I'm just gonna line my quarter inch line on my ruler up with the, with the solid line on the edge of my block. This is my favorite part of foundation piecing is cleaning it up so it looks all, looks all beautiful and magical and perfect. Look at how pretty those points are. Now, when I finish this one up and I go and sew it together and then I throw it in the washing machine, this stuff is gonna wash out. This is the difference between just using copy paper, which is what most YouTube videos will tell you to do is just print it on paper. And you can do that if you like. But if you're gonna go through all the work and you're gonna spend all the money on fabric and thread and, and all that, spend a little bit of extra, fat, extra time and money and get the product that's gonna stop this from happening. Okay, so they look like they've been done the same way. But now what I have to do is I've gotta come back in here and I've gotta rip all these papers off. 
which is why I use a little bit smaller seam allowance because then it's easier to pull these out. That's why I said if you're gonna use paper, make it a smaller seam allowance because then it makes the perforation more. Rip these two outside ones, here's a tip. Pull the fabric and then this will come out easier. But this is a pain in the butt and it makes a mess and then your cat is covered in you know scraps of fabric so now what happens is when i go and pull on this like i did before look at all those black stitches and i'm pulling on it just like i did the other one but you can see those stitches in there that is what i have to show you for today's demo i hope that if you were one of those people that was like <sighs> foundation piecing that you're a little less um scared of it now and willing to try worst thing that happens is you have um a, a new ruler so all right it's nice to see you guys again 